everyone, Tim Gilliam with Teak Master here and we're in beautiful La Cunada, California. And we're about to get started on refinishing these double garage doors. And they have oxidized, they have weathered, and they look unsightly. This is an absolutely beautiful home and why shouldn't the garage doors look just as beautiful? We're gonna go ahead and show you the technique on what it takes to refinish these back to stellar condition. Okay, so I wanted to explain why these doors look so bad. So, as you can see, on the top here, you have some color, especially right up against the top. And the reason is, is you have the overhang and the sun doesn't hit it. But as it gets down towards the ground, it progressively gets worse. So you have extreme oxidation, and then you have absolutely almost nothing on the bottom. No protection. So when the water rolls off of the eave here, it hits the ground, it splashes up, and it is going to continue to weather. And eventually, if it's not taken care of, it's gonna get damaged. So the sun doesn't hit as much over here, and then it starts getting worse progressively down towards the bottom, and it's starting to blister and peel, and it's oxidizing, and it looks unsightly. So all of this is caused by weather, and Mother Nature's elements are extremely harsh, especially sun and moisture and this is a true testament of the harsh process. Okay, so as always, we do a pre-job inspection of all of the surfaces that we're working around. And as you can see in the corner here, you have paint, a paint definitive paint line. You actually have paint here and here and all over the stone, white paint for some sort of reason. You even have it here on the door itself that's going to come off obviously you have it up here and then if you come over here you also have some rub marks from looks like where somebody hit their tire or something like that we just want to point them out document them and make sure the homeowner is fully aware that these damages were not caused by our crew So we want to make sure we're extremely careful in preserving the channels here and the molding here and the corners and all of the attributes of this door. We also want to make sure that we get in between here and remove all of the previous coatings in the channels, in the corners, in the seams and all of the door as much as we possibly can and this takes time. I know this is a flat surface. Many people perceive that, oh, it's so easy. All you have to do is sand and this and that, but it isn't. It's really difficult. It's detailed. And furthermore, as you can see down here, you have to protect everything you're working at. The guys are actually in the back here, inside, taping off the inside. That way, none of the dust is going to get inside. We just want to do that extra level of protection to make sure no dust enters the garage. In order to remove the coating that is failing, we need to apply stripper. And the stripper is sometimes called remover. And it commonly comes in a paste that is brushed on and allowed to sit for a while. And it will actually bubble the finish. It bubbles varnish and paints and oil-based products. Not so much uh, on the water-based products, but it's good for this because it was applied with an oil-based product, some sort of a varnish. The guys let it bubble and then they start scraping. And as you can see, they just take their spatula and their scraper and they scrape off as much of this coating as they possibly can. We also have a little wire brush to get in between the lines and the slats and that will remove the previous coating.
So after the stripping, we sand. So sanding is going to remove the remaining debris that wasn't able to be removed with the stripper. And it also exposes fresh, new, smooth, raw surfaces. And this is just a finished sand. We're not taking off layers of wood or anything like that. It's just a finished sand with our state-of-the-art Festool dustless system, which we can use most of the time. Sometimes we can't, but on this project, we definitely could. And here you see it. You have one door that hasn't been touched and is weathered, and then you have another door that has been fully sanded and stripped. We stained it to this darker sort of espresso color. Unfortunately, we don't have the footage on that, but you guys get the idea. So the final step is applying the clear coat. And the best way to apply the clear coat is by spraying. You get a nice, thick, uniform look. And we decided to use a satin sheen on this, which is a low luster, sort of modern finish. And take a look at these results. Okay guys, so this is where we do the recap. We started out by protecting everything before we got into the job. We went ahead and stripped the protective coating with the chemical stripper. We allowed it to bubble. We scraped off the previous coating and then we sanded. Sanding exposed fresh, new, smooth, raw wood. After that, we stained and sealed it to this color that the customer chose. We did a few different samples for her and she zeroed in on this particular color. I think it looks great. It's very conducive to the style of her home, coupled with the color of the stucco and the um, roof tiles as well. And then after that, we spray coated the yacht matte clear coat and it's this beautiful sort of satin sheen. We sanded in between coats to ensure that we got a nice, beautiful, smooth and hard furniture grade type outcome for these doors. Okay, I also wanted to point out that the definitive line at the bottom of the doors has been dramatically reduced, I'd say by a good 90, 95%. And if you remember, the damage was caused by the overflow of rainwater coming off of the roof line, hitting the ground and splashing back up onto the doors. And there was a definitive line that looked unsightly and it was weathering at a faster rate than the other portions of the door. It's been dramatically minimized. And the good thing is, is that the client chose a darker finish. So it masked it a little bit or a lot bit actually, um, and really blended well and even out the entire door. Now I wanted to point out also a couple things with the actual boards themselves. So yes, you have the same type of wood here, but you also have wood that's come from different trees. So they're not going to be exactly uniform and the same exact color from each and every board. Now on the camera, it probably shows up that these two boards are a little bit lighter in person. It's not really like that. They blend really, really well. But I just wanted to point out that these come from different trees and the stain and sealer will magnify a lot of the natural grain and color. And yes, you can maybe go board by board and, and feather it a little bit and darken things up and lighten things up. And we did that a little bit, but this is you know pretty much what the door is intended to look like. Okay guys, thank you so much for tuning in to our garage door refinishing video here in La Cañada, Los Angeles, California. If you like what you saw, go ahead and click that like button. Go ahead and follow us because we're coming out with more videos exactly on topics just like this. Go ahead and take a look at teakmaster.com. It's our website and it's chock full of information on exterior wood refinishing and maintenance. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Tim Gilliam with Teakmaster signing out.